Hi guys and welcome to your podcast. I'm your host Oleg and I'm excited to talk today about 2023 housing market forecast and we'll wrap up what's happened in 2022 housing market with my guest Oleg Tkach. Oleg is my good to go lender and he is a branch manager in NFM Lending. Oleg, please introduce yourself. Yeah, hey Oleg, uh, thank you for having me. It's funny we have we both have the same a- name, but uh, uh, nonetheless, we've been working together for a little bit of time. I've been in the mortgage industry for 18 years and uh, definitely been through some uh, different cycles. And uh, super excited to be on this podcast with you. 2022 was one exciting year, depending on whether you're a buyer or a seller, and it depends on. Uh, you know, whether it's the beginning of the year or the end of the year. So I'm excited to be talking about this. I think this year taught us a lot and it's exciting to look at this year and what we learned and, uh, you know, and and to talk about the predictions of 2023. I know that, I mean, you're a pro's pro when it comes to buying and selling. And I think a lot of agents, you know, they kind of uh, talk about what they're reading and you actually go deeper than that. You actually take data and you, uh, I know that there's been many times where you've predicted things and told me this is what's going to happen with the market. And I'm like, no, 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 Oleg, I can't see it, but you were right. And so I'm excited to see what your predictions are in 2023 and kind of share what I'm seeing out there with, with all the buyers that we're working with. And hopefully whoever's watching this, you know, most of them are planning, trying to make plans for 2023 and trying to plan and time the market. Hopefully they could take some stuff away from this. Hopefully that will help them with their plans to whether when they should sell and and when they should buy. And while no one could ever time the market perfectly, I think that as long as you're a seller and you're selling during best possible time you can and you're a buyer and you're looking at you know what we've learned in 2022, using that to apply that to your strategy with buying, as long as you get close to the bottom or the top, I think you're doing good. And I think that's the main thing that we want to accomplish on this call. So thank you for having me, Oleg. Uh, excited to be here. And I'm glad uh, you were available to record this podcast today with me. 2022 was a crazy market and we have a very turbulent market. It was in favor to the sellers beginning of the year with a lot of demand on the housing market and very low supply. This market uh, shifts to be a buyer's market by end of the year. It's a lot of turbulence, a lot of changes, a lot of shift. And you guys can see the slide with me on the screen right now. So nationally, uh, it's a score logic uh, slide. Uh, nationally, prices increase. It's probably will be shocking for you, but prices increase in Washington state between five and 10% depends on the city and depends on the county. Uh, the most increase we see on this uh, graph, it's, it was Florida, Miami, for example, 22%, prices increase in 2022. Even in this current turbulence market, a lot of sales was recorded in 2022. I believe nationally we have like 5. 5.8 million sales this year. If I'm not uh, wrong, but it's about this number. It was a lot of sales recorded in 2022. What are your thoughts all look about that? You know, I think when you're looking at this chart, you know, one could be kind of confused by it and it could be both ways. And what I mean by that is If you bought in the spring, you're thinking, what do you mean 5%? Uh, I just paid 150, maybe $200,000 or more than ask. Uh, I mean, prices probably went up higher than that. If you're buying in the last two months, you're thinking there's no way they would increase. We're seeing price reductions and price reductions, you know, prices actually went down. And I think the beauty of it about this chart is it's measuring the last 12 months. And if we look at December last year and December this year, and you're looking at your typical home, I think it's safe to say that homes are a little bit more expensive this year, probably about 5%, like your chart suggests, in Washington state. However, if you bought in the spring, I mean, in the spring, people were going, like you had said, with inventory being point some days, eight days on the market. We lived through that time with buyers. It was not a fun time. There were times where a home would come out on the market and buyers would be placing an offer and they'll be placing an offer before seeing the home, waiving everything, putting a hundred grand, 200 grand, you know, uh, or sometimes earnest money down. And some people might be watching this and saying, that is crazy, but that was the reality of the environment. And if you were a buyer during that time, if you didn't go that aggressive, you had zero chance of getting a home. And so when you look at it and say, well, that was crazy, that was the market that we saw. Now, fast forward six months, to nine months and now all of a sudden 
it's the opposite. You have buyers that now are writing 70, you know, thousand under, a hundred thousand under ask. You're seeing price reductions all around on homes that were listed for a lot more than really worth. In reality, you know, people that bought in the spring are thinking, you know, that's crazy. You're writing 70 grand to 100 grand over. How are you going to get your offer accepted? Well, the market shifted. And we, we saw that in one year, we saw an extreme seller's market in the beginning of the year where everything sold for way over ask. And that's not good, right? We, yeah. Then we go to an extreme buyer's market where right now buyers are writing 75, 100 grand under ask. And that's a little bit too much on the extreme side as well. And so when you look at this year in general, I think it's probably the most emotional roller coaster year that we've seen buyers go through because no one knows what to do and what's right or what's wrong uh, for the most part. And everybody's seeking advice from friends and family because no one wants to make a mistake. At the end of the day, I think that when, if you, we were to look not at purchase prices, if we took purchase prices out, and we actually looked at payments of the people that bought in the spring and payments of the people that bought in the fall, the one thing that we would probably see is very, very similar pay payments. And I think that a lot of people don't re realize how much, Im how much rates impact. Uh, this is one I created after having countless conversations with people. Because I've always said people buy payment. People don't buy price of homes as much as they buy payment. We have clients and they're not focused on most of them are not focused on what is my max purchase price as much as they are, what is going to be my monthly payment for that purchase price. And so when you look at this, this is a great comparison because a lot of people think, but especially buyers, high rates are bad. And in reality, high rates for a buyer is really not as bad as people portray it. And what I mean by that is it gives you the ability to negotiate. And while we can't control what the Fed does with rates, I have no control over it, or you have no control over it, and the typical buyer has no control over it. The fact of the matter is the higher rates gave buyers the ability to negotiate. When you look at the spring, people were going super aggressive because they were trying to get in before rates went up, right? Yes. Now that rates have gone up, people are now saying, well, the rates, the damage is already done. We are where we are right now. Therefore, I'm going to take my time. And because of that, now all of a sudden they're utilizing that. And now sellers, the ones that missed, missed the spring, they still got to sell their home. They still got to move to the next home. You know, most sellers are not just selling to cash out and sit, right? Some are, but most of them are selling because they either need to relocate. They either need to, you know, move on to their next home, their next stage in life and everything else. And so, Buyers are taking advantage of scenarios where sellers have to close quickly. I got a, uh, I was talking to an agent over the weekend, seller's agent reached out and said, my buyer already has a home in mind. We need to close in two weeks. If you could close it, this in two weeks, we will lo lower the price by a hundred grand. I mean, we never saw that in the spring, right? Um, yeah, so, I remember a couple of houses like in Bellevue sold $1 million over asking price. I remember three homes like that was in April, 2022. Yeah, spring market was uh, very unfortunate for many buyers with the home prices, but very fortunate for the sellers, yes. And uh, prices start declining even year over year in Bellevue, for example, because it rises so much. From summer of 2021 to beginning of 2022, on the east side, prices increased 45%. It's like unheard of. It's never happened before. And then right now, prices decline about 28% from april to december 2022 but that's totally normal market and now buyers can buy and have some power to buy they can negotiate price they can do home inspection they can have finally contingencies and uh, what we see right now in the market people who wants to sell and not many sellers like i can show you guys this next slide is what's happening in king county data for example and last seven days what we see how many new listings came on the market you guys can see 256 listings in king county and how many uh, we have recorded sales sold property 563 you guys can see we have double numbers of sold properties comparable to new listings and if that trend is gonna continue that means we're gonna move from two uh, two point seven months inventory like we had in November to less than two months inventory again next month and we're gonna move into like sellers market territory 
with those prices but we'll see what's gonna happen next year and um, what's happened about rates and mortgage rate is a very important indicator for affordability for the buyers i want to talk about this a little bit more today in this episode as of today this is chart from freddie mac as of december 15 data mortgage rate 6.31 percent yeah yeah so i mean when you look at this you know december of last year we were locking people under three percent you were getting over three percent either you didn't have as good credit or you were trying to get a no you know no cost loan and the lender was paying for for most of the closing costs but i mean on average people were going under getting under three percent the prediction was that this year we in 2022 rates were supposed to go up to about 4.75 percent was what the prediction was well we obviously went way past that now i don't think anybody saw the uh, aggressiveness the fed was gonna you know the, the remarks and their moves and all that no one expected that of course no one expected inflation to be as high as it was which caused the fed to go way more aggressive than anybody thought and so if you look at it you see you'll see that right in may is when the market kind of shifted a little bit and then in in the summertime is kind of when we you could say plateaued and then all of a sudden home prices went from going up really fast in the spring to plateauing and then they started coming down uh in the fall you look at the fall there was a time where rates were seven and a half percent in end of october beginning of november and that was the average interest rate so we've come down quite a bit this chart isn't as dramatic as what the reality was when it went from seven and a half percent now to the low sixes we've come down a lot which also when you look at it it also shows up in your sales data that you showed how many homes went pending and how many less homes went on the market well we have all this data as a seller that homes are coming down you're gonna have less sellers want to list and you have all these you know rates coming down for buyers that are saying hey i need to get in because if rates are coming coming down my payment's getting better now again i'm buying payment now we're finding that sweet spot between purchase price and uh an interest rate and so i think the biggest takeaway is from this year, you saw how quickly markets could change. This buyer's market isn't gonna last forever. We're gonna go back into a seller's market and you know when that happens, you know, we'll, we'll give our predictions later on. But when it does go back into the seller's market, you know, people are gonna look back and say, I should have bought then. I should have, I could have negotiated. I could have got the seller to pay. Like right now we're seeing sellers pay all closing costs, pay people to get a two one buy down and, and get the rate down significantly. Um, and everything else. I mean, this is definitely one of the best buyer's market that we've seen in, in some time. And it's reflective of the rates. And I think that a lot of people don't give that as much credit because remember people buy payment more than they buy price. And that's something that I've been saying for years. And I think that this year only, um, you know, really uh, backed that up and cemented that, that theory as, as, you know, this is what the trends uh, are. So um, thanks for sharing that. It was definitely, we, we all lived through that. I've never seen rates go up so fast in one year. I mean, they probably did when I just got into the business, but I was probably too too new to, to know the difference. But in recent time, um, and again, being in this for 18 years, this is not nor normal as far as rates coming up as much as they've come down. Same as with COVID, it wasn't normal for them to come down as much as they have e either. I mean, we're... You know, I, the market is trying to find stability. And I think that's what we're going to see over the next few years is more of a stable market for everybody moving forward. Um, could you bring up the next slide, Oleg? I want to touch on yeah. it. Yeah, sure. The mortgage rate predictions, right? So, you know, obviously no one knows. Everybody's predicting. And right now the stance when you look at everybody is that rates are going to be in the sixes. And I think that based on the last Fed comments that we saw, Powell came out and said, we like what we see with inflation. It is starting to come down. However, the job's still not done. The recent drop that we saw in rates from the seven and a half to the sixes were because the Fed changed their aggressiveness. They were going to hike 0.75 in December and they only hiked 0.5. And the comments is really you know what moved the future market i mean if you think about it the feds hiked rates but yet mortgage rates didn't change why because it was already priced in and so one thing that people don't understand is a lot of times these fed hikes when they happen 
they're already priced into the market. If the Fed comes out and says, we're going to hike seven times next year, if they said that, that would be priced into the market within two weeks. It, we would have to wait the whole year. That's why this year when they came out in the spring and in July, we had the really bad inflation report and they said, we're going to go very aggressive. We're going to go way more aggressive. We, all that, I mean, we saw rates skyrocket quickly before the Fed even did anything because we knew what they were going to do. And so when you look at this, the last Fed comments, they were very, very neutral. They said, well, the job's still not done yet. We're willing to change it and pivot if we need to, depending on the inflation data. So if you look at most of these people here, the average rate you could say is between 6% and 6.5%, which is really where we're at right now. We're in the six and a quarter percent range, which yeah. is still high side of rates. Now, there are other people that predict rates that are not, you know, these general institutions. And there's a lot of people that believe, and I'm one of them, by the way, I truly believe that rates in the summer are going to be in the in, in in the fours, whether that's the high fours or low fours. Oh, that, really? You know, but I believe they're going to be in the four fours, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. I think that the inflation data, which the Fed has been basing everything off inflation data, I think the inflation data in the first second quarter uh, is really going to catch up, and we're going to see inflation is not it is is way more under control. I think the Fed really overreacted this year. There's a chance we're headed into a recession, major chance. We're probably, we're, I mean, by definition, we're already in a recession. We've already had two negative uh, GDP uh, quarters, uh, negative growth. And so in reality, this first quarter is probably not going to be the best data going to come out from not only sales data, but projections. And I think that based on that, I, you know, and again, we'll see if I'm right, right? I mean, we, we should we should revisit this in the summer, uh, but I believe that we are going to be in, in, in the fours next year by summer. And I think that that's going to spark more of a seller's market, in my opinion. I, I really do believe the seller's market is closer than what we think. Yeah, Matthew Gardner actually, he did his 10 predictions for 2023. Matthew Gardner, if you guys doesn't know, he's an Americanist and he says, uh, rates gonna be stay about six next year. By by end of the year, they're gonna be go below six. Uh, probably will be like end up here with five point eight. But your prediction to meet four. This is very bullish prediction, which is like I like yeah. it. We'll but I'm, I'm agree. Fed's doing a good job uh, apparently, and for last uh, two CPI reports, they come back positive. And what we just see, we see by by June, July, inflation is going to be come back to two, three percent. If that happens, mortgage rate will be come back as well with that. Inflation is going to go back down that low, but I think it's going to get low enough to where the Fed is going to have to, you know, change their stance. Which really, if they came out tomorrow and said, "We feel like we've done a lot, and we feel like now we, we're gonna we're gonna pause on hiking, we're gonna stop hiking." Rates would have, would come back down the mid fours really really easily. The, the 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 rate market is still baking in future rate hikes that have happened that haven't happened yet. And if that changes, we'll see rates come down. Why do I think it's going to happen? I really truly believe the demand is a lot lower for everything right now, especially after the holidays. If you look at it, there's a lot less demand for contractors. If you look at Amazon and all these other companies, these tech companies, they're starting to lay off. You know, the Fed and a lot of people look at this and say, why is the Fed doing this? The Fed wants this to happen. So when you see companies laying off, the Fed is saying it's working. We're saying what's wrong. In reality, in order to slow inflation, it's not just, you know, it, it doesn't just happen with consumer goods. It happens with demand from, the, you know, the housing market, fuel uh, the, the the labor market, you know, one thing that people don't realize, the Fed said, we're okay with more unemployment. We want unemployment to go up. And they said that in the last, well, what does that mean? If an employment, if more unemployment goes up, there's less demand for cars, there's less demand for, you know, uh, goods, there's less demand, which overall brings inflation down. And when they said, we're okay with economic pain. Ahead. So that is what I'm basing it off of, is I believe that the demand across the board has already came down quite a bit, and when they're, when, when these reports are coming out, they're they're really lagging, and I think that the data is going to show, and then I think the Fed is going to have to pivot faster, 
and because of that. But again, we'll see. Maybe I'm way wrong. I would love to, you know, get on a call with you, Oleg, in, in, yeah. in July and see how, you know, off I was or, or if I just got lucky. Good stuff. Good stuff. Ecologic forecast for 2023 on this slide. The projection uh, nas- nationwide price is going to be increased 4.1%. Currently, right now, who's selling properties? Uh, people who's uh, divorcing or maybe somebody died or maybe the last employment. This is like three major categories, people who sell in their property. Market definitely possibly can be a rebound, but nobody knows what's going to be happen with the market in the future, but we have a couple home forecast predictions and for 2023 from big institutions like National Association of Realtors, Realtor.com, and Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, some institutions, they suggesting the price is going to be increased and some going to be decreased. Like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, bullish on a point, price is going to be decreased, just 0.2%. If you guys combine them together, in average, price is going to be in, uh, increased 0.4%. I think if you combine all projections for 2023 together price is probably going to be the same uh, this 2023 will be very interesting year to see how many listings will we come up on the market in january and february and if you have more listings uh, supply demand simply going to work and people will buy properties and sellers will sell properties but if you're not going to have a lot of listings a lot of supply uh, in uh, january and february uh, we'll still have uh, high demand uh, for housing market in washington state again washington state market different uh, from other states and if you guys listen to us from different states uh, very important is employment and very important how strong economy in your states in washington state's pretty strong economy i will just mention about layoffs and a lot of it company going to be layoff people i heard about amazon going to be layoff about ten thousand people facebook layoff like about four to eight thousand people but if you guys uh, research data and see how many people was hired before the COVID time uh, we have about 24,000 uh, jobs was opened before COVID time, Washington State for IT industry, and they hired 24,000 people, a lot of big names, big companies. But currently, we're going to have layoff about, uh, about 15, 15 18,000 people. And, uh, but that's going to be offset market. We're going to become back to similar market, labor market like we had uh, before COVID time. And that's why Matthew Gardner in his last prediction says uh, he doesn't think layoffs in Washington state is going to be influenced market in Washington state because uh, on one time when Amazon and Facebook are going to be layoff people, a biotech industry hiring people right now and those uh, people this is labor force migrate from one job to another job pretty easily right now you know so i i think that uh we had a real uh like if you were to really watch the economy for the last since COVID, you see how much the fed has everything to do with whether or not we have or experience massive growth or not. And a lot of people don't give the Fed enough credit for how much influence they have. You know, they feel that's just a matter of rates and well, what does that mean? Well, let's look back at the last few years prior to 2022. We had some of the best economic years in general. If you were, I mean, anybody could get a job almost anywhere because there's so much demand. Like you had mentioned in IT, the construction industry boomed, the trucking industry boomed, the housing and mortgage industry boomed. Everybody was looking for employers because the Fed pedaled to the metal through, you know, giving lending out easily to companies. In addition to that, now we've refinanced and now we have more money to spend on everything, right? And you saw that that was the main driver of the inflation that we our experience was the Fed going a little too aggressive for too long. So why does that matter? Well, 2023, the big question mark is what is the Fed going to do? If the Fed, for whatever reason, comes out at any point and says, wow, inflation is now still way out of control. It's not going to change anytime soon. And we're going to go way more aggressive. My prediction of four and a half percent is a prediction there's still people that predict that are predicting their rates are going to go into the nines. If the Fed comes out and says we're going to go way more aggressive and, the Fed, and rates go into the nines, how much? 
I mean, that's going to, you know, be the same thing as when you're driving 60 miles an hour and you slam your brakes. That's what we're going to see in the economy because everybody, you know, even if you want to buy, your buying power is wiped out overnight. So I think that, the, you know, depending on what the Fed does, if they're going to come out and be neutral, we're going to see rates in the neutral range. I think we're going to enter into a little bit of stagflation where you're going to have low activity. Why would you sell if you're a buy, if you're a seller, if you don't need to sell and you have a 2% rate? You're just going to find a sweet spot and it's going to be a pretty neutral, low activity year, which is not good uh, for anybody. But nonetheless, it's what we're going to see. Um, and that will help with inflation. Now, it's, on the flip side, if the Fed comes back and says, we've done too much, we now need to slow down because the economy is going, you know, really, really coming you know, down quick uh, from a standpoint of activity, you're going to see rates drop in the, into you know, the fours, maybe even lower by the end of the year, which would then all of a sudden spur a buyer's market again, because we're talking about housing here. Why? Because rents continue to go up and up and up yeah. and up. And so if you think about it, I think the Fed is the biggest question mark and their policy is going to drive either us into a seller's market again, which is very possible because guys, look at this year, look how fast it happened, both markets, or it might go into even more of an extreme buyer's market. I think you have a, about 25% chance one or the two are going to happen. And your overall 50% chance that we have is probably more of what we've seen rates in the sixes, maybe in the fives. And then, you know, that's a 25% chance uh, of, you know, in a low activity year, rents will continue to go up, you know, as less and less people buy at the same time too, not many people are going to be selling, therefore prices are going to hold. So my, my overall prediction is that we have a 25% chance we're going to go into an ex even more of a buyer's market, a 25% chance it's going to go into a seller's market, and 50% chance we're going to find some sweet spot and it's going to be low activity. Um, you're not going to be able to negotiate like crazy. And as a seller, you're not going to be able to get anything you want either. It's just going to be a low inventory, weird kind of year of like not much action. And so that's my take on 2023. I do believe that uh, rates will come down based on the, what I've seen recently. But again, that's one of the, you know, so many outcomes that, you know, and no one has that crystal ball as cheesy as that sounds. Uh, I think the Fed, the Fed is going to have more of an impact than anybody on, on 2023. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And uh, Oleg, I really like your prediction for 4.5%. But again, Feds, uh, Feds can do whatever they want to do. So this is only uh, only organizations who like nobody knows what they're going to do, and everybody depends on the Feds' decisions. And uh, we'll see. Buyers marry the house, but dating the rate. If you, even if rate higher right now, they can always refinance. Rates going to be improving in the future. Builders uh, now more shift in new construction from single-family home to multi-family home. Uh, because there will be more demand for uh, for rental market in the future and they go going to shift with the market as well. So there will be less single-family homes built in the near future. And I think those single-family homes will be very precious uh, to buy right now, so especially when you have a good deal. And my take from today will be, guys, if you're looking to buy property, if you're able, you afford, you're willing to buy, should not wait for the better days because better days will maybe never come. It's really hard to predict market. You cannot time the market. But if you will and able, you have employment and you have jobs, you probably should move forward to find your house to purchase. Well, you know, my thoughts is if you're a buyer and you, um, you're trying to time it, I think if you could get the right hold, the seller to give you the right price. You know you're not going to keep the loan forever. No one does. 2024 is an election year. If you look historically, rates always come down in election year. It happens always. So we know worst case scenario, you have to wait 2024 to refinance. And so I think if you can get the right, right place, get your own place, you know that that payment isn't going to be forever. You protect yourself, you know, from being you know, in, in the worst possible position, was, which is a renter. Like renter, you have no protection, no control, anything can happen. Inflation is absolutely against you. Whereas when you're a homeowner, I mean, when, when I think back at 2020 and 2021, when rates were in, in the twos, how many people lowered their payment by $700 a month, $1,000 a month, $1,500 a month, yeah. and that 
forever. That's for the rest of the. So I think that um, you know, as far as if I'm a buyer, do I want to buy when rates are low and I'm going 100, 200, 300 grand over? I wouldn't want that. I'd rather if you're gonna buy anywhere in a any way in a year, um, the higher the rates, the more you can negotiate with the sellers. As long as, like you said, you're financially able, that in reality within within a few years, most likely you're going to have a way lower monthly payment, which then at that point, if rates do come back down, now all of a sudden home prices go up because now there's way more demand. And now you're sitting there, you know, look, looking like a hero and people are asking, well, how did you know? No one knows, right? But overall homes will get more expensive in the long run. We could all agree that 10 years from now, anything that you're buying today, even if even the people that overpaid in the spring, 10 years from now, they would have made a great financial position and all the tax write-offs and the benefits that come with home ownership. A lot of people don't give that enough uh, of credit. So when you look at it from a overall financial perspective, long-term based on tax code, based on appreciation, you know, based on, you know, future refinancing, I mean, it, it's a no, it's a no brainer. The question is, are you financially ready to get in right now? And if the answer is yes, um, I would want to get in before the spring because historically the spring is always more competition. So I would try to get in before the spring. I would try to get in before that, uh, January 15th. If you're trying to time it, if you're a timer and that's what you're going for, I would say that your best bet is, you know, the two slowest month in real estate in the year, which is December and January market not going to be stay the same market will be always changed and right now is a buyer's market but it can be easily changed to the seller's market and you never know when it's going to be happen but right now very short window of left uh, probably you're right by the springtime to buy this winter time winter times months january february march usually when we have a lot of sales recorded prices usually going up in the springtime right now it's a great time to buy us and guys if you're looking to buy if you need our help, I will put Oleg's information below uh, this episode and you guys reach out for him. He my good to go lender, my very great partner. I'm working with Oleg for numbers of years and he never failed to close any transactions. All clients really happy with his services. And uh, my information will be below too as well. Thank you so much guys for watching today. Be with us until next time in 2023. Have a wonderful week. Bye now. Bye.